Hey guys, looks like we are live. How's everybody doing this wonderful, beautiful Thursday? It is um, where I am in Central Texas. It's like mid 70s. It is absolutely beautiful. So today for our live Q&A, I'm happy to answer any questions that you lovely pet parents have as you join Instagram is now telling me, hello, Trish, how are you? That it is inviting people to join. And so what I decided to do today is talk about female dog spaying options. And the reason that I uh, am going to talk about that today is because one of um, our wonderful followers, uh, uh, probably a few weeks ago now, answered a poll question and said that's what she needs to learn about. So once I got back from the cruise, hello, hello, thank you guys for joining. Um, and I keep going back and forth because I've got Facebook here and Instagram here. So um, once I got back from the cruise, I started looking at the information that a few different veterinarians have been putting out about different specifically spay options for um, you know female dogs because I think we can get a little overwhelmed if we're doing the spay and neuter our dogs and cats. So we're going to focus in today on female dog spay options. And so the, <laughs> what are you doing being noisy over there, CE? Kim's being noisy. The veterinarian who I think has some of the best information on spay, spay and neuter options in general is Dr. Judy Morgan. So uh, you can, if you're watching this live or if you're watching it later on, send me a DM. I can send you a link directly to the um, blog post she has specifically on sterilization options for female dogs. But I'm just going to do a quick run through um, of what those options are so that you can choose the best option for your dog. Because, you know, while I may have a preference for my dog, every animal is an individual and we need to make sure that we are treating them that way and we are providing for them as individuals. So it is not a one size fits all uh, situation, I don't believe. So, there are four methods. Did you know that? There are four methods of spay for female dogs. And uh, we really only know the traditional spay, which is the ovariohysterectomy, sometimes abbreviated as OVH, and what we call a traditional spay with my quote fingers. They're very exaggerated today, I just noticed. Anyway. <laughs> um, so ovario hysterectomy or a traditional spay is the most common sterilization procedure in the United States. With the ovario hysterectomy or traditional spay, uh, the ovaries and uterus are removed. In female dogs, um, this particular spay, hello, hello, thank you for joining. So in the traditional spay, the ovary and uterus are removed. Um, it eliminates the risk of pyometra and pregnancy, and heat cycles are eliminated. Removing the ovaries and uterus also eliminates the risk of false pregnancy. Uh, if you have ever, hello, hello, thanks for joining. So if you have ever experienced a false pregnancy in a dog, it can be absolutely heartbreaking for sure, but certainly not something we can't overcome. Um, False pregnancies mimic true pregnancies resulting in abnormal behaviors as well as an increased risk of mastitis, which is mammary infection. So that's the first option, the traditional spay for a female dog. The second option is the ov ovarectomy. Okay. Um, ovarectomy, O-V-E, or laparoscopic spay. So the laparoscopic spay is a procedure that involves removing the ovaries, but the uterus remains intact. This sterilization method eliminates the risk of pyometro and pregnancy. Behavioral changes associated with the heat cycle are avoided. The advantages of the 
uh, laparoscopic spay over the traditional spay is less post-operative pain, complications, and recovery time. So uh, Dr. Judy goes on to say, and again, if you're just joining, um, send me a DM if you want a direct link to this blog post. Uh, I was just asked to provide a sterilization options for female dogs, and this is the best information that I have found. So uh, Dr. Judy goes on to say, removal of the ovaries may protect the female dog against mammary tumors, uterine infection, and tumors uh, for the ovary, um, ovario hysterectomy, which is the traditional spay, mastitis, which is a breast infection, transmissible venereal sarcoma, ovarian disease, which is cancer-assisted infections, and chronic endometriosis, which is inflammation of the uterine wall. However, a literature review on the connection between spaying and mammary tumors showed most studies had a high risk of bias. So, um, and then she lists a bunch of studies and explains the bias basically in those surgeries. So here are the risks and disadvantages associated with the ovario hysterectomy and the ovarectomy. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's the laparoscopic spay where basically um, the uterus remains intact. So here are the risks um, and disadvantages according to Dr. Judy Morgan. Uh, there is a higher risk of joint disorders. There is a higher risk of cancer, uh, sadly. There is a higher risk of developing autoimmune disease. There is higher risk of urinary incontinence and changes in behavior. So those are two options, absolutely. Um, and Certainly the avario hysterectomy or the traditional spay is most commonly used in the United States. So all of these five risks and disadvantages are included with that. And again, she has um, DM me for the link. I will send it to you because she has all of these studies linked showing how these risks are associated with a traditional spay and the laparoscopic spay. Um, not to say that that's not going to be the option that you choose. I'm just providing you with the best information I have found on spaying female dogs. So to reduce risks associated with removing the ovaries, and here's the deal, guys. So one of the reasons that removing the ovaries and specifically uh, it is so has so many risks associated with it is because we're removing uh, the hormone producing organs. So, you know, you think of a six month old dog or younger being spayed and having her ovaries removed. So she has to go through her entire life, including that span where she is a puppy growing into a teenage and adult dog where literally like everything, all of her bones are needing to fuse, you know, joints, ligaments, everything is growing and she isn't receiving the hormones that she needs to do that properly. So um, to reduce the risks associated with removing the ovaries, there are two recommended ovary sparing sterilization procedures. Uh, as with any method, there are pros and cons, of course. So the ovary sparing spay, also referred to as a hysterectomy, removes the uterus and cervix, leaving one or both ovaries intact. This procedure eliminates risk of pyometra and pregnancy, and it protects against some of the more serious cancers and immune-mediated diseases. This sterilization option is a wonderful option for those that want to eliminate the risk of pyometra, sterilize their pet, and keep hormones intact. So what are the risks or disadvantages of doing the ovary sparing spay? <laughs> Excuse me, let me get a drink of water. Mm. So um, heat cycles continue. And most people in the United States especially have never really lived with an intact female dog or even an intact male dog. So that's a very big, like that's, that's a huge difference that you know, people aren't, they don't know what to expect because you know never lived through it before. I will say um, for me, and this, was, this is just one experience with one dog, when I was growing up, as I was getting older, my mom, uh, got a dog and it was really, 
it, it was an interesting circumstance that I won't bore you with, but she did get a dog from a breeder and she was a beautiful dog so much so that the breeder gave my mom a discount in purchasing her in exchange for leaving her intact in the event the breeder wanted to breed her. So we did live with an intact female dog uh, for many, many years. And it because I was a kid, I didn't really know that that wasn't normal. <laughs> um, fortunately, with this dog, she really didn't have huge mood swings or behavioral issues uh, to speak of that I remember, at least. Uh, we just, whenever she was in a heat cycle, we, my, my mom made little like um, doggy diapers for her so that there wasn't, you know, blood getting on things. But it was interesting. And that's probably one of the biggest like points that people come up with when they're talking about the ovary sparing spay. Um, there is also higher incidence of mammary tumors and some cancers. So I, now I know I'm reading from um, Dr. Judy's article on this, Dr. Judy Morgan, but I will say that um, talking to Dr. Ruth Roberts about this, she says she would much rather remove a mammary tumor um, than deal with a lot of the internal cancers that we're seeing in dogs that haven't had their hormones for their basically entire life um, because they are particularly insidious where a mammary tumor, for the most part, you can go in, cut it out, you know, have really great margins and it's a one and done situation. Um, I'm not saying that is the, that's, you know, going to be the case for every single dog, just a conversation that I was included in with Dr. Ruth Roberts, uh, particularly about um, spaying and neutering in, in female dogs. So, and, and again, the degree of risk depends on the breed. Um, for example, a higher incidence of mammary tumors have been reported in poodles, English, Cocker Spaniels, and Dachshunds. However, many of the studies are biased. <laughs> so again, she, Dr. Judy goes on to talk about the biases in these studies. Um, they, it, she also lists as a risk of over, ovary sparing spay, uh, a potential decrease in brain function. So the uterus is thought to only be active during reproduction, but a fascinating rat model showed removing the uterus, a hysterectomy, impacted brain functioning. The uterus is an organ that is part of the endocrine system. Removing it does not go without impact. So while we may not actually have studies on dogs telling us exactly what we can expect with, hello, Chrissy, um, with brain function and removing the uterus, um, it is something to think about. So the fourth option for spaying female dogs is tubal ligation. So in tubal ligation, all organs stay intact, but there is zero risk of pregnancy. Tubal ligation is a sterilization method that does not remove the ovaries or uterus and may be a better choice for certain dogs, especially young ones. The dog still possesses the ability to maintain heat cycles and produce a steady level of hormones. This procedure is not well known in veterinary clinics. So what are the risks and disadvantages associated with tubal ligation? Um, one is that the heat cycle continues. We just talked about that. A higher instant incidence of mammary tumors and cancer. Again, we just talked about that. And pyometra. So pyometra is a, is a secondary infection that occurs because of hormonal changes in the female's reproductive tract. Pyometra can be fatal. The risk depends primarily on breed and age. However, the survivability of pyometra in a re retrospective study was 97% in a non-specialized veterinary hospital setting. So uh, it really is up to you <laughs> what you choose. 
as far as spaying your female dog, but those really are the four options that we have. Um, and I want to uh, thank um, you guys for sending me that question, asking me about it. It was way more than I felt I could put in a short reel. <laughs> so I decided to do it on one of these um, longer live videos. So again, there is no one size fits all solution to this, but those are the four options that you have available to you. Now, Kimberly, when we adopted her, she was about two and a half years old. That's what the rescue told us. And they spayed her, not right when we adopted her, but recently before we adopted her. They were, she was in foster care for a year. So at some point in that one year span, she was spayed a traditional spay. Now, um, you know, as a smaller breed dog, the fact that she spent at least a year and a half, potentially up to two years with uh, her ovaries and uterus means that she had those like that really fundamental time where her body, she was growing and everything was building out and she had all of her hormones during that period of time. So while I would love for her to still have the hormone producing ovaries, um, she does not. And that is not something we can go back and change, obviously. Um, but it would be, for me, it would be definitely one of those things I would, I would have to really take a good hard look at deciding between the ovary sparing spay and the tubal ligation if I were to do it, if I, if I were to have to do this with, with a dog myself uh, now. So that, just so you know, would be my preferences is, is, is looking at um, one of the two of those. So, and it would, again, depend very much on the dog that we were talking about. So there you have it. There are your options. Again, um, DM me for a link to Dr. Judy's article because she has a lot of references in it, studies and references, and I'm happy to send that to you. So um, if we don't have any other, let's see, I'm just checking to make sure we don't have any other questions before I say goodbye, but thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate you and keep sending me your questions. Um, check my stories because I will occasionally post there to see like what kind of questions you guys have to determine future lives like this. Um, Y'all have a great rest of your Thursday. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. And I look forward to talking to you soon.